Hey everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thank you for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer comes from Boak's, uh, comes from Boak's Brewery, uh, it says here, it says Boak Beverage, um, and it's brewed at High Point Brewing Company, and it says here that they're out of Pompton Lakes, New Jersey, so they must be having somebody else brew their beers. Uh, this is a 10%. This is their Monster Mash Russian Imperial Style, a big multi beer with lots of hops. 10% Russian Imperial Style. Rico sent this to me. Don't think I've had anything from these guys before. So, Rico, thanks a bunch, my brother, for sending me the beers that you do and the ones that I cannot get my hands on down here in this part of Virginia. They screwed us a little bit, though. The beer is down to here instead of up to here. Screwed us all the swallow here. What's up with that, boys? Uh, this should be a tasty beer, I'm hoping. Uh, like I said, I've not had anything from these guys before. Rico picked this up and sent it to me. So let's see what this one brings to the table. Uh, commercial description on this. The IBU user says there are 100, which is a, a very big number for a Russian Imperial Stout. A lot of those beers are pretty big as far as ABB and having a lot of malt to, to brew that big of a beer. But 100 IBUs sounds like a double IPA. So uh, evidently it's kind of sweet and they've kind of balanced it out with a lot of bittering hops. That's where we're getting that much uh, IBUs on this one. So let's see what this brings. Very interesting numbers here. It says here, his Russian Imperial style is intensely flavorful beer, chocolatey, roasty, fruity, and bittersweet with a hidden alcohol presence. Hidden, they say. Hmm. We'll see about that. This beer was designed to be sipped slowly on a cool evening in a nice cognac glass. Let it warm up to get the full flavor of this beer won best in show at the 2005 New Jersey State Fair when Brian was home brewing. So, very impressive there. Congratulations, Brian. Uh, food pairings for this style of beer, uh, Russian Imperial Stout, goes well with your chocolate dishes, of course. Bash Rider right Pint Becker Nine Tumblers, uh, Nonic uh, Snifter. I got my favorite Snifter, and it says here can be selling for a long period. Uh, 10 percenter, I don't see why this would not keep. Three, five, ten years, or even longer. So, that's all we need to talk about. So, let's stop talking and start pouring. So, it has a price tag on this $4 for a 12 ounce bottle. Not too extremely uh, pricey. And being a 10%er, I would think this would have been sold in four packs instead of a six pack. So, four, eight, twelve, that's $16 if you're buying a six, uh, a four pack of this. Unless they're giving you a discount for buying all four of them. Got a nice, uh, Monster on the front of it with a damn spike club. So let's see if they've spent as much money on what's inside the bottle as they did on the label. I poured it kind of unaggressive on that because I didn't want a massive head, and as you see, it poured basically none. It's just barely, not even covering the top of the beer over into the light. Uh, I am getting some down here. It's like a murky brown color in the thin part of the glass. It's not black like a lot of stouts are, especially the Imperial Russian style, or Russian Imperial styles. Uh, not black at all. It looks a lot like a porter in the glass. It really does. So let's get a nose on this. I'm 
don't have to agree with them. The alcohol is fairly well hidden. I'm getting a rich roasted malt with a little bit of cocoa in there. Maybe some hints of some dark fruit, but the cocoa and the roasted malt is standing out more than anything else. Well, let's give it a taste. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. Kind of subdued. 14% Russian Imperial. The alcohol is damn sure very well hidden. Or 10 percenter. This drinks like a 7 or 8 percenter, guys. Not boozy at all. It's actually not bitter on the back end for 100 IBUs. Very well made, but I'm not getting a whole lot of flavor going on here, guys. If I was doing a blind taste test on this, I would think this would probably be a, an 8% or maybe, maybe even a 7. Very, very easy drinking. But with that, I don't have a lot of big flavors. Not big chocolate, big cocoa, big coffee, dark fruit. To me, guys, it seems like it's been filtered to death. Uh, not a lot of flavor going on with this. I'm impressed with the 10% and the alcohol bit is hidden as well, and it's easy sipping as it is for 10%, but not a lot of big flavors going on here either. To me, guys, if you've never had a Russian Imperial Stout and you were wanting to get into something like this, this may be a good one this may be a good transitional Russian Imperial stuff. Not a lot of bold flavors, not a heavy chocolate, heavy coffee, heavy dark fruit, heavy alcohol. Doesn't have any of those heavy flavors. Everything is fairly well subdued, very balanced, very easy drinking. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm impressed, but I'm unimpressed by how easy drinking this is and how low flavor profile that it has for a 10% Russian Imperial stuff. I would never, I would never say that being a blindfolded and tasting this beer that it was a 10 percenter. I've had seven and eight percenters that are more boozy than this. It's well made in that aspect, but the flavor profile is not stepping up to the plate. So, like I said, maybe a good transitional beer. So, let me let it warm up, come up to room temperature, let her have a taste or two, and see where this one ends up. I'm impressed with certain aspects of this beer, but I'm not impressed with the flavor profile that I'm getting with this beer. So, I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Got a little bit left here. Best if not, about 30 minutes. Like I said earlier, impressive about how easy drinking this 10% Russian Imperial Stout is. Uh, impressed about how well everything comes together in this beer. Uh, nothing outstanding more than the other. The chocolate's not blowing away the roasted malt, or, or the alcohol is not blowing away the the roastiness of the malt or the chocolate, uh, but I'm not getting a whole lot else with this beer. I'm not getting a lot of coffee, I'm not getting a lot of chocolate. I mean, it has this plus and minuses there, guys. Uh, very easy drinking. I would say this is a great transitional beer if you've never had a Russian Imperial Stout and you want to get into this style. This will be a good one to have, uh, especially since the alcohol is so well hidden. I mean, it's basically non-existent for a 10%er. I've, I don't think I've ever had a 10% Russian Imperial Stout. 
that's this easy to drink and that it has absolutely no alcohol presence at all. If I was guessing, I would say that's a damn lie. It's it's not 10 percent. It's seven or eight percent. So it has it has its pluses there, but it has its minuses to go with that. If you're a seasoned craft beer drinker and you're looking for a nice, tasty Russian Imperial Stout, this is not it. Uh, it is very subdued, very low keyed. Uh, nothing. You're not getting a big alcohol. You're not getting big cocoa or chocolate. You're not getting big coffee. You're not getting dark fruit. It has those plus and minuses there. So I'm gonna leave it at that. It was very, very enjoyable to taste it and to have it and to review it for you guys. And there's nothing wrong with an entry-level version of the Russian Imperial Stout. But if you're a seasoned Russian Imperial Stout drinker, this is not going to blow your hair back at all, guys. But if you're not, and you've never had one, and you want to try one, and you can get this, this may be a great one to, to, to jump into to start off so it doesn't blow your palate out of your mouth saying, oh, it's too boozy, or it's too much chocolate, or it's too much coffee, or, or too much dark fruit. Uh, it's, it has its plus and minuses. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at on this guy. The seasoned craft beer drinker is not going to be impressed by this. Somebody that's never had a Russian Imperial Stout before, that wanted to try something that's not overpowering in one aspect or the other, they would probably love this. Uh, it's not overly anything. So, but me being who I am and what I have, I enjoyed this. Uh, I appreciate Rico buying this and sending it to me, but I was not blown away by this, this guy's at all. So, if I'd have had this six years ago, I would probably have been a whole lot more impressed than I am at this stage in my, where my palate is right now. So, but that being said, I think it is a well-made beer, but I don't think it's to the A category in my opinion. So, good transitional Russian Imperial Stout is where I'm going to leave this. My numeric rating on this is probably going to be a 7, B+. Plus. Uh, but depending on numeric rating on this, guys, it would probably be 88, maybe an 89, if it had a vintage on it. Uh, and I don't see anything on there. And let me look before we go and see what uh, Rico, he's got this listed. Do not see it on here. No, so that's where I'm going to leave you guys. Uh, 88 for me. 88 on this one. Over to uh, Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 81. Substantially lower number there. That's just, that's just barely a B minus. It's almost to the C category. Uh, and over to uh, Rate beer, rate beer says 91 overall, but 38 in the style. So, plus and minuses on this beer, like I said. So, uh, if you're a seasoned craft beer drinker and you drink uh, Russian Imperial Stout regularly, this is not going to blow you away. Uh, but for a 10 percenter and 100 IBUs, if you're wanting to get into a Russian Imperial Stout, this would be a great one to start with if you can get it. Uh, everything is fairly well balanced, put together very well, but not a lot of taste. So, that's where we're going to leave you guys. If you've had this one from Bokes, uh, this is done at High Point Brewing Company out of Pompton Lakes, New Jersey. Uh, if you see any evidence of any kind of dating on it at all, no vintage. No writing, no nothing. I would like to know what vintage it was. Is this 2016 version? Is it 2010 version? What year was this put in the bottle? So, we'd like to have that information and we do not. So, got to try it. Thanks, Rico. If you've had it, let me know what you think. And let's go dig something tasty out of the fridge tomorrow. It'll be a little bit tastier than this, I think.
I know what I'm going to grab. See you then.